148. We'll have a brief devotion. Before we do the Lord's business tonight, the church's business tonight, and um, just a few minutes we'll get to that, but first of all we're going to have our devotion, and, and it's, the title tonight is very simple, Praise Him, okay, Praise Him, and uh, there's, in the book of Psalms there's clearly a lot of songs that were written in praise to the Lord, and uh you know, wonderfully uh, written songs. They don't necessarily rhyme in English, but they're poetic in the way that they sound. They're beautifully done and only written from a perspective of someone who is filled with the Holy Ghost, whom God has put his hand upon to write about God. And we do know that some of the psalms were even written from, uh, from men who were even questioning what they believed. And and, and even trying to figure out who God was and what he was doing. And, but when we get to the end of the book of Psalms, it's a lot of Psalms of praise. And I'm reminded that I always think, when I think about praise, I, I think about the passage where Jesus is having his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And the people who are standing around, who are naysayers and they're enemies of Christ, they they tell Jesus, you know, why don't you tell these people to be quiet? Because they were saying Hosanna. and They were actually quoting a psalm about the Messiah. And they said, why don't you tell these people to be quiet? And Jesus said, if I told them to be quiet, the very rocks would cry out. That's, a, that's an interesting thought. That rocks could cry out praise to the Lord. And it is a, fa- a matter of fact. And we're going to see that in Psalm 148 tonight. And we're going to go to one other spot in the Word tonight to see this. But... Uh, praising God and His creation praises Him. Whether we realize it or not, His creation does praise Him. And when I think about rocks crying out and the fact that what we're going to read here in a little bit, that there are uh, different parts of God's creation that are not human, that are not mankind, that praise Him, I don't want to be left out. Okay, I want to be one of His creation that praises Him. You know? I don't want to be on the sidelines letting uh, what we would call inanimate objects praise Him. Okay? I want to be in on that. And, and by the way, someday the Bible says in Revelation that we're all going to sing songs to Him. And we're all going to uh, praise Him in certain ways. And some of those very words are in Revelation. So it's good for us to warm up while we're here on earth. So let's read Psalm 148 and get a look at this praising God this, this chapter and uh, about how his creation, his works, praise him. Psalm 148. Praise ye the Lord. That's a command, by the way. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his hosts. Praise ye him, sun. And moon, praise Him, all ye stars of light. Praise Him, ye heaven of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for He commanded, and they were created. He hath also established them forever and ever. He hath made a decree which shall not pass. Praise the Lord from the earth, ye dragons, and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and vapors, stormy wind fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl, kings of the earth, and all people, princes, and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for His name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. He also exalteth the horn of his people 
the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye the Lord. So we see here as a command for all of creation to praise the Lord. Now, we get a little shout out there, uh, people do there in verses 11 and 12. We get called out to praise the Lord. But the majority of this chapter, the majority of this song is for all of His creation to praise Him. I mean, it tells the angels to praise Him. The sun and the moon and the stars to praise Him. Did you know that the sun and the moon and the stars are praising the Lord? Now, it's a language we can't hear, but it's a language we all see. And we're going to read that in just a moment. But the sun and the moon and the stars, they all praise Him. You know, they, uh, nobody has to say, stand and sing. They just do it. it it's out of a, an awe of their Creator. It's out of a reverence and a fear of the One who spoke and they came into existence. They can't help but praise Him. And I love when we have opportunities to do so. Now I understand that you know, some people like music and singing more than others. I am a music lover. I love to sing it. I love to hear it. I, I, I just love music. And especially when we use music to praise the Lord and to sing about Him and to sing uh, to one another, to teach one another, the Bible tells us, in music. I love it. And I understand not everybody does. But you know there's a command to praise Him and we have to remember that music is not the only way to praise Him. We can praise Him in word. We can praise Him just in our prayers. In our, in our prayers to Him in our private time, we can praise Him in our conversation with one another, can't we? I mean, have you ever been talking to someone and, and you hear some of the things that God is doing in their life and you just praise Him on the spot? You know, and, and, and we, we say praise the Lord all the time. And, and it's really a command. It's not just something that you, just a phrase that you say that automatically praises God. And so when we praise the Lord, it is giving Him the glory, it's giving him recognition for all the things, listen, that he does and for all that he is. It's not just about what he does. Just who he is is worthy of our praise. Just the fact that he is God, that he is above all, is worthy of our praise. And so here the Bible tells us that, that all creation praise him, the sun, the moon, the stars, the heaven of heavens, the waters that be above the heavens, the firmament. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For He commanded and they were created. And, and what that says there in verse 5, for He commanded and they were created, is it reminds us of our place. He is the Creator. Listen, none of us or none of this, the earth and everything, and none of it would be unless He spoke it. So we have to keep in mind that we would not exist were it not for His divine command. And because He commanded and, and spoke and we were created, He is worthy of our praise. He says He has established them forever and hath made a decree which shall not pass. It's going to go throughout eternity. Praise the Lord from the earth, ye dragons. And, and, and the deep, all deeps, dragons. Now, I don't know if that means like fire breathing, but it does mean that there's some kind of uh, animal that the Bible's referring to from the deeps that were to praise the Lord. Mysterious things to you and I that praise the Lord. Things that we have never laid our eyes on are praising the Lord and have praised the Lord. Imagine that. And then it says fire and hail, snow and vapors. I mean, if you just look at the elements. They praise the Lord. Now, it's easy to see how snow would praise the Lord. It's beautiful, right? Just this afternoon, um, we got home and um, I was washing my hands at the sink to have a donut before I sat down for a few minutes. And I look out the window and it is snowing like crazy. It was like someone sh shook a snow globe, you know. And, and it's beautiful when it's falling. And it, 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 it shows this beautiful handiwork of our Creator. Fire... Hail, snow, vapors, the smoke, the, the winds, the stormy wind fulfilling His Word. These things praise Him. question is, do I? 
do you? When they, when they move, they praise the Lord. What about you and I? Are we praising Him in our lives, with our words, with our songs, with our, the way that we live, and with what we give and what we do? Are we praising Him? Verse 9, mountains and hills. I love to see a beautiful mountainscape, don't you? It's hard to beat a beautiful mountainscape with either a sunrise or a sunset. I was watching, Dave's going to love this, I was watching today, um, in the, you know how you have stuff you watch in the background while you actually sleep? You know that, you know, NASCAR, golf, right? You know what I'm talking about? I was watching today um, some mogul skiing thing on NBC. It just turn it down to number eight on the volume, which is perfect sleeping volume. And uh, it just is in the background. And uh, a commercial came on for Montana. Dave loves Montana, okay? A commercial came on for Montana. And the, the picture was these skiers on top of this huge mountain. And everything you saw, trees, rocks, everything you saw was pure white. It's like not one branch was sticking out from the snow. Everything was silhouetted in snow. And it was breathtaking. I said out loud on my couch, that is beautiful. These things praise the Lord. These, these things that He have cre- has created praise Him. Mountains. Majestic mountains. I've never been out west and saw a real mountain before. I hope to someday to look up and see you know, these incredible things like El Capitan or something like that that just you look up and you almost feel like in nature that you're in the cathedral of God Almighty. I, this is His. This is all His. It all praises Him. Fruitful trees and cedars, beasts and all cattle, those ugly things on the earth, praise Him. Creeping things. Things that give you the chills when you see them. Creepy crawlies. They praise Him. Flying fowl, birds, <clears throat> kings of the earth, and all people, here we get mentioned, and princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children. It doesn't matter if you're uh, five years old or 105, praise the Lord. It's a command to praise Him. And then this is so powerful this statement in verse 13 let them praise the name of the Lord even just his name praise it because his name alone is excellent the name of the Lord the Bible says is a strong tower the righteous run into it and they are safe the Bible says the name of the Lord is something to be praised because just his name is powerful His name says who He is. He's God. He's Lord. He's Jehovah. Yahweh, as they would call Him. His name is so much different than anything we can even explain. Praise His name. Because His name alone is excellent. You know, when we get to be thinking that we see our name on a a plaque or, you know, my name's on the bulletin. I'm the pastor. And... uh, Right along with Mark and Greg, so I'm not that special. But anyway, my name's on the bulletin. My name's on the gospel tracks. If you go to the website, it says Pastor. That's really cool. We like to see our name. But <clears throat> there's one name alone that's excellent. And that is the Lord's name. He is the one who deserves and is worthy of our praise. Verse 14. He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints. He exalts the praise of his saints. Can you imagine? He, he lifts up the praise of his saints. That in, he enjoys it. Can you imagine that when you and I, no matter how we praise him, that God is enjoying it? I, I know that you have those moments in church when you're singing a song and, and, and God speaks to your ministers through you or to you. And like tonight when we were singing holy, holy, holy and, and uh, Mark asked the, the instrumentalist to stop and we just lifted our voices. And I love to sing, but I also like to stop and listen at those points. And just listen to the sound of God's people praising Him. And and if if we love to hear that, imagine how much He does. He says He exalts our praise. I believe God was honored by that tonight. If 
by his people singing about his holiness. Isn't it wonderful to know that his, he was exalting our praise tonight? <clears throat> he was involved in our service. He's here. He's, he's moving. He, when, when, listen, when we show up and when we gather together in his name, he's there. And then when we genuinely, from, from hearts of genuine praise, lift him up, he, the Bible says he exalts that. It's, it's amazing that, that, that the God of the universe, listen, would be paying attention to a little room in Finneytown, Ohio tonight. <laughs> and he, he is. He, he was. He exalts his, the praise of his people. And then the, it ends with that same command to praise the Lord. Now let's flip over briefly to Psalm 19 and we'll close. Psalm 19. Every time I hear, see this passage, I, I have to laugh a little bit. <clears throat> and I might have told this story before, so if I have, I apologize. But um, in 2005, we took uh, our teenagers, when I was a youth director, I wasn't the youth director, I was assistant. We took our teenagers to South Dakota uh, to an Indian reservation for a mission trip. And um, when you get out there and you're way out in the middle of nowhere, um, the stars are just, it's unbelievable, you know. Uh, it, it, what they look like and what you can see what all you can see and um, so he was super pumped about that because he and I took a survey visit out there and uh, we went out and when I say he I mean Pastor Wally he was my the youth director and, and we took a survey visit just he and I and, and we were driving we flew into North Dakota we were driving to South Dakota at night and uh, I mean we were out in like there wasn't a light the only light was the headlights of our car and so he was like, let's pull over, let's, let's turn the car off, let's get out, and then let's just wait a few minutes and look up. It was a clear night. So we did that, we got out, and we were just chatting, standing there on the side of the road, you know. And, and after a few minutes, you know, you look up, and it's like, I've never seen stars before. You know, it's just, I mean, it's unreal what it looks like. And, and that was so exciting, and we enjoyed that moment. Well, when we took the teens up there a couple months later, he, he said, you know, I want to take the teens out to see the same kind of thing we saw. And I was like, that's going to be awesome, you know. And we were staying in a little town called Mobridge. And, uh, of course, they had, it was an Indian reservation, so they had a big casino there and everything. And um, he said, we're going to go out to the monument of Sitting Bull, and we're going to turn all the buses off, and we're just going to look up. And, and he said, guys, I'm excited. He was getting the teens all pumped up about seeing this. And, and he was going to read Psalm 19. And so we get out there, we turn the buses off, but we were not far enough out at all. I mean, you could still see lights everywhere. The casino was just, you know, a stone's cast away. And I'm like, man, we didn't go far enough. And then all the teens start mocking us, you know, like, oh, look at all the stars. This is wonderful. I've never seen this before. So it was an epic fail. We got back in the buses and we were just like, man, you know. Anyway, every time I read this passage, I think about the time we tried to see stars. Now, Psalm 19 verses 1 through 4. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament sheweth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night sheweth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. Now, the, the day uttereth speech, night sheweth knowledge. There is no speech or language. The line goeth out. What does all this mean? What is he saying here about the heavens? Well, the heavens, the heavenly beings, stars, moon, sun, all these things, declare or proclaim the glory of God. Verse 1. The firmament, all that's around us and above us, shows or displays his craftsmanship all that he does just look up and you will see God's handiwork verse 2 day unto day uttereth speech they continue to speak every day and night unto night shows knowledge every day and every night God's creation is speaking and it even goes on to say in verse 3 there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. In other words, no matter what language you speak, you can understand that. You, you don't have to 
whether you're English speaking or Urdu or, or uh, Chinese or Mandarin or Spanish, it doesn't matter what you speak. Everybody can look up and say, okay, there's something amazing going on there. And it declares in any language God's handiwork. They speak without a sound or a word. Their voice is heard in different ways than with the ears, right? Verse 4, their line has gone out. Their message goes out through, the, through all the earth. Their words to the end of the world. Everything they have to say is seen everywhere. Listen, the most remote village on this planet where civilized man has never set foot, so to speak, they can see this. They can hear this. And what they are seeing and hearing is this, that the God that made, made all this is so great that all that uh, navy or black canopy dotted with lights, listen, is the tabernacle or the tent for the sun. That is the kind of God that we know. And all of that speaks of Him. Everyone can look up and say there is an incredible God. It's a language that everyone can understand. So, while you and I can't hear their voices, rest assured God hears the voices of all of His creation. He hears all of their praise. The question is, Will he hear it from you and me? So I would challenge us with this. Don't let a piece of hardened dirt outpraise you. Don't let a star or the sun or a mountain or a snowflake outpraise you. We, unlike those other things, we were created in his image. And as his image bearers, we should be shouting the loudest praise to our God. Let's bow for prayer. Our Father, we stand in awe of you this evening as we consider the fact that all of your creation does praise you. And Lord, it is a, a convicting thought that I can go a whole day without even uttering a, a word of praise, yet not a day goes by where the stars and the sun and the moon where their voice is not heard the ceaseless praise that comes from your creation, Lord. Lord, let me be a part. Lord, of all of your creation, we have the most reason to praise you. Because you made us in your image, and not only did you make us in your image, but you died for our souls. And so, Lord, can we tonight as a church family see your goodness, see your greatness, be in all of you, and live lives that praise you. We ask these things in Jesus' name.